Ben Stokes. Those are the only two words needed to describe the craziest, most thrilling, most miraculous performance from an English cricketer in 142 years of Test cricket. England's most modern heroic all-rounder kept their ashes hopes alive with the most outrageous innings of 135 not out to redefine what is possible in this, the greatest of games. The moment he cut Pat Cummins through the covers for another boundary and held both arms aloft was the moment England chased down a record 359 to win and Stokes took his legend into yet another realm. How on earth could this man, who had delivered the World Cup to the nation, barely six weeks ago with the most dramatic of innings, outdo himself in such spectacular style? On the ground where Sir Ian Botham had produced the previous best in 1981, he could only watch on with pride as Stokes went one better to take England to a one-wicket win that levels the series and keeps this incredible, glorious summer alive for a few more weeks yet. To say that England's hopes were on life support when Stuart Broad was trapped LBW by the magnificent Josh Hazelwood with 73 more still needed would be the understatement of the year. Stokes was on 61 and despite his 92 against Ireland, little was expected of Jack Leach. The ultimate Jack. And yet between the shots of adrenaline pumped into the stands by Stokes and the calm bedside manner of Leach who kept him company, England's Ashes hopes were brought back to life in the most remarkable way. In their partnership of 76, Stokes struck 74 of them with four fours and seven sixes in an astonishing effort that he found hard to put into words. I don't know how I did it, said Stokes. I know we've won the game but I'm pretty tired to be honest. It was just a great day. It is never over till it is over and I only got nervy when it got down to the last ten. I had my pitching wedge at the perfect distance today. The pressure Jack is under there. Those will be the most crucial fifteen balls he will ever face. He's got serious speed to stand up and do what he did. First Stokes took down Nathan Lyon. Australia's third highest wicket taker of all time behind only Shane Warne and Glenn McGraw. A pair of straight sixes were followed up with a reverse slog sweep for six into the western terrace that sent an already frenzied crowd into raptures. They still believed. He followed that up with an over of brazen big hitting against Hazelwood that he took for 19 and included two monster sixes. This was Ashes cricket at its most exhilarating, compelling and thrilling, and for all those who would bemoan the rise of T20 cricket and its influence on the oldest of contests, this was white ball cricket at its best too. The sort of cricket where 15 runs per over is well within a team's grasp and no game is ever done until it is done. And as long as there is er in Stokes lungs and a bat in his hands then you cannot be certain that the game is up until it is up. With the series now tied up at 1-1, this will take some getting over by the Australians who had their chances to win the game, but couldn't quite handle the pressure. Marcus Harris had the chance to be the Aussie Andy hero. But in scenes reminiscent of Simon Jones at Edgebuston in 2005 he dropped the catch offered by Stokes at third man and the game continued. Australia appealed for an LBW against Leach that clearly struck him outside leg stump and they used up their final review going for it. It meant that when Lyon had a huge appeal for LBW against Stokes that was turned down, they had nowhere to turn and of course the replay showed that a review would have won the game. As Ricky Ponting said on commentary, there was no way that the first review could ever have been out. They burned the review and it has cost them the test match. And they still had one more chance when Leach was left stranded going for a run that was never there. All Lyon had to do was take the ball and then the bails, but he dropped the first and with it the game was gone.